Al-Muskar, chapter on the had or penalty for drinking khamr. Imam Qudam Rahimahullah said in his book Al-Amda, وَمَنْ شَرِبَ مُسْكِرًا قَلَّ أَوْ كَثُرْ مُخْتَارًا عَالِمًا أَنَّ كَثِيرَهُ يُسْكِرْ جُلِدَ الْحَدَّ أَرْبَعِينَ جَلْدَ لِأَنَّ عَلِيًّا جَلَدَ الْوَلِيدَ بْنُ عُقْبَ فِي الْخَمْرِ أَرْبَعِينَ وَقَالْ جَلَدَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ أَرْبَعِينَ وَأَبُو بَكْرَ أَرْبَعِينَ وَعُمَرَ ثَمَانِينَ وَكُلٌّ سُنَّةٌ وَهَذَا أَحَبُّ إِلَيْهِ وَسَوَاءٌ كَانَ مِنْ عَصِيرِ الْعِنَبِ أَوْ غَيْرِهِ Whoever willingly drinks a musker, whether a small or large amount, while knowing that a large amount of it causes sukr or intoxication, as we translated it, and we'll talk about it, is flogged 40 times. This is because Ali radiallahu anhu flogged al Walid ibn Aqba 40 times for drinking khamr, and he said, the Prophet flogged 40 times, Abu Bakr flogged 40 times, and Umar flogged 80 times. All are sunnah, and I prefer this. And the same applies whether it is the juice of grapes or anything else. Uh, And uh, here we have in Had al-Muskar uh, or Had al-Sharb al-Khamr or the penalty for uh, drinking Khamr. Uh, the, the position that is mentioned here by Imam al-Qadama which is that whoever drinks Khamr, whether it is little in amount or large, mukhtaran, willingly, عَالِمًا أَنَّ كَثِيرَهُ يُسْكِرُ Knowing that a large amount of it causes sukr. Causes sukr. You have to understand that these scholars were so precise that every word, every letter means something. So you'll have to always reflect and be very sort of um, diligent in your uh, investigation of each and every word here. So he, whoever bring, drinks a musker, uh, what is a musker? Uh, what is sukr? Sukr is translated as intoxication. Okay, so cocaine causes intoxication. Uh, marijuana causes intoxication, or, you know, yes. Uh, so cannabis causes intoxication, heroin causes intoxication, cocaine causes intoxication. Is that all sukr? Yes and no. Depends on who you ask. So intoxication is simply understood to be wal khamru ma khamar al aql. Umar radiallahu anhu said khamr is what confounds the intellect. Khamr is what confounds, khamr al-aq, confounds the intellect. That's why it's called khamr. So based on that understanding that anything would, that would confound the intellect is khamr, you will have people like Nawawi ibn Taymiyyah ibn Hajar who would consider intoxicants even if they are not alcoholic beverages. Khamr. It confounds the mind. So all the above will be khamr. All the intoxicants that we talked about will be khamr. You will have other people, like al-Hattab al-Maliki, al-Qarafi, and uh, Sheikh Zakaria al-Ansari al-Shafi'i, uh, who would say no, that these things confound the intellect, but they are not khamr. And the position of the latter group, although the, the, the earlier group sounds a little bit more like, you know, they're in their stature, although like the Qarafi is of great stature, Hattab and Sheikh Zakaria Ansari, of course, people of great stature, but at least the first group are more popular and famous and uh, yeah, sort of have greater following. Um, but the second group are, are right, I believe, uh, because uh, uh, Sukr, during the time of the Prophet ﷺ, was a Bala particular, because here, are we doing Qiyas in Lugha, 
sorry, the, just a linguistic analogy. That's what uh, the Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn uh, Nawawi and Ibn Hajar are, are doing. That they are doing away with the technical qiyas and using linguistic qiyas only so that they don't even have to deal with the technical qiyas, the fiqhi qiyas. To give the same ruling of khamr to uh, cocaine, cocaine, most of the people will say, I need to make qiyas here, right? Okay, so they're saying you, you don't need to make qiyas because cocaine is khamr. In the sense of what? Well, khamru ma khamr al-aqr, Umar said. Khamr is what confounds the mind. Therefore, anything that confounds the mind will take the label. This is called qiyas lughawi, not fiqhi. This is called basically just uh, giving, you know, like once you say that, that this label applies to that, you don't need to make qiyas anymore. The people who say, no, let's, no, we will work to make qiyas, which I, I believe to be the more accurate position, let us not just rush and call this khamr, khamr during the time of the Prophet wasallam. Even though the statement of Omar would say that would mean that, but that what he meant, because if you, th if you look at the entire statement of Omar, he said, Nazala tahrim al-khamr wa yatusna min khams. The prohibition of khamr was revealed when khamr was made of five things. At-tamr was zabib wal hintat was shair wal asad. That is the dates, raisins, uh, barley, uh, wheat, and honey. And khamr is anything that confounds the mind. But he is saying that the context here is alcoholic beverages that are made of these substances. So Omar's statement is saying that khamr applies to all the above. Any alcoholic beverage made of this, made of that, made of apples nowadays, champagne, whatever, all is khamr. And to that extent, we agree. But basically to say that anything that confounds the mind, even if it's not an alcoholic beverage, then we'll have to ask ourselves a question. Uh, are the effects of these intoxicants all the same? We know that the effects of all alcoholic beverages are alike, regardless of their origin. It's alcohol that causes this. But does cocaine produce the same effects? Heroin, marijuana, no, absolutely not. No, 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 not. And if you're not a physician, don't, don't disagree because you will embarrass yourself. <laughs> and if, particularly a physician that, that deals with this. You know, if, you, if you're a dermatologist, you probably will, should not be talking either There's about this. More or less is not the issue. Oh. We're talking about the same nature of harm. The idea here is, are we saying this like this? Are, are we saying that this produces the nashwa and tarab? Does marijuana produce the ecstasy or tarab or nashwa, the excitation? Do all drugs ca cause the same sequence that we see? with consumption of alcohol? No. Therefore, is that consequential? Yes. How consequential? To me, at least consequential, we have to establish first, establish first the consensus that anything that would confound the intellect that can deprive you as a human being of your intellect is by consensus haram. And I would add to this kabira, enormity. There is no disagreement about this. Having established that, should marijuana take the same rulings of wine in, or, or khamr, including the had? No. Uh, should, and if we give 
the same rulings of Khamra to all these substances. All these hospitals that are using morphine, uh, should, like the, everybody should quit. You know, oxycodone, oxycontin, morphine, and in fact, a lot of things that would basically cause some uh, degree of um, confound in the mind. Uh, some of the anesthetics that don't completely get you, knock you out, and cause you to be, uh, you know, unconscious, would, would, that would apply to them as well. So, uh, these intoxicants, and I used intoxication to translate sukri because it is the best word to use, not because it is the perfect word to use, because it is not. Sukr is sukr. Sukr is a condition that develops after the consumption of alcohol. Now you have to understand what is that condition. You have to know what is that condition that develops after the consumption of alcohol. And then if you want to make fiqhi qiyas, you would say that anything that produces a condition like this would take the same ruling but not just a simple linguistic chaos, because it would be too uh, unsurgical, sort of like too crude of a qiyas. So you need to make surgical qiyas here, We're talking about a had. If, if the Prophet وسلم, said, Dra'u al-Hudud an al-Muslimin mastata'atum, if the fiqhi principle is Dra'u al-Hudud bil-Shubuhat, avert the Hudud by ambiguities, there is enough ambiguity here to say that the rulings do not apply to all intoxicants. So we will separate between them. We will say all intoxicants, regardless of the condition they, they cause, are haram and enormities because the, the thing that Allah honored you with, which is your aql, to basically willingly give up some of it, is certainly haram. We're not talking about uh, we're not talking about sort of uh, treatment of pain. We're not talking about anesthesia. We're not talking about conscious sedation. We're not talking about all of that stuff. But to do this for leisure is certainly haram. Uh, but but things are not all the same. So muskir here is particularly uh, is the particular effect that results from consumption of alcoholic beverages. That's not an agreement. That's not a matter of consensus. People disagree. That I told you the disagreement, but I told you my position as well. So man shayibu muskiran qalla aw kathur, whether a small or large amount, a small or large amount. Why is he saying this? Because according to the Hanafis, and not all the Hanafis, but particularly Abu Hanifa and Abu Yusuf, uh, if it is not made out of uh, grape juice, and secondarily, uh, dates, it is not khamr, therefore a small amount of it is not haram. And that's their position. If, if, if you're surprised, I'm, I'm not basically uh, disclosing anything that's a secret anymore. Everybody knows that nowadays. Um, however, however, that's not the position of Muhammad ibn Hassan. He agreed with the majority. And that is not the fatwa in the Hanafi madhab nowadays. So the position of Abu Hanifa and Abu Yusuf is not the, the sort of the mu'tamad for fatwa, authorized for fatwa in the Hanafi madhab nowadays. The authorized for fatwa in the Hanafi madhab nowadays is the position of Muhammad ibn al-Hasan. Okay. Why did they say this? And that is why you will find Ibn Qudama, when they stress something, they are basically trying to say, there is a disagreement, but we want to stress this. That's why Ibn Qudama said, The same applies whether it is the juice of grapes or anything else. 
The Hanafi said that khamr is by definition the juice of grapes when it, when it becomes intoxicant, you know, like uh, fermented. Uh, okay. Nasha, awishtadda, it is the same word, fermented. Uh, so it is grape juice. Dates would be called khamr in an amount that produces intoxication. The rest of these things are haram only if they are consumed in an amount that results in intoxication. That is why you find scholars nowadays, you know, that's why you find the professors of fiqh nowadays in different universities, different uh, sort of, they, they bring up that Hanafi position to say that a little bit of beer is okay, a little bit of champagne is okay, and all of that stuff. But that is not the position, that is not the authorized position for fatwa in the Hanafi madhab, which is the position of Muhammad ibn al-Hasan which is the position of Muhammad ibn Hassan. That is an agreement with the position of the Jumhur. That is based on the Prophet وسلم, saying, Kullu muskirin khamr wa kullu muskirin haram. Every intoxicant is khamr and every intoxicant is haram. That is based on the Prophet's statement, ma askara kathiruhu aw ma askara mir'u al-farqu minhu fa mir'u al-kafi minhu haram. Whatever intoxicates in large amounts, then any amount of it is haram. Uh, and this, certainly, you know, the, the, there are uh, multiple proofs. Now, now, also in defense of Imam Hanifa, he has answers, and they are inferior in our assessment to the position of the Jumhur or to the evidence of the Jumhur. But Imam Hanifa is Imam Hanifa, and Imam Abu Yusuf is Imam Abu Yusuf. And it was not only them, but it was the Kufiyin also. So it is the Kufiyin in general, not just the Imam Hanifa and Imam Abu Yusuf. They have answers. They have also reports from the Prophet وسلم, where he said, Al Khamra min hatayn al Shajaratayn, Al Karma wa Nakhla. So Khamr is whatever comes from these two trees, uh, the grape, uh, the grapes, and uh, dates. Uh, but the, uh, the sort of the, the, uh, yes, but they, they, uh, the, the, the amount of evidence that we have, so the textual proofs that we have that I just mentioned, and the rational proof, which is that, you know, at the end of the day, these are alcoholic beverages, and at the end of the day, they cause the same effect. And uh, the fact that they come from this or that should not be consequential. Uh, so the position of the majority is, to me, to me, clearly superior, uh, decisively superior. But that's why Imam Al-Qudama mentions these things. He says, qalla aw kathr, whether it's small or large in amount. And he goes back and says, the same applies whether it is the juice of grapes or anything else, to point out the presence of uh, disagreement. However, that disagreement was rarely a practical disagreement. You don't find Hanafis uh, throughout the ages drinking beer or champagne or anything, because they have moved on, they have authorized the position of Muhammad ibn al-Hassan, their fatwas are based on the position of Muhammad ibn al-Hassan, so this is almost a historical uh, disagreement. That should not be revived. Uh, now, this, uh, but, uh, but some the students of knowledge should be aware of it, and should be aware of its roots, and should be aware of the discourse, and should be honest about it, and all of that stuff. Because dishonesty 
is shooting yourself in the foot. It will always be like this. Because whenever your dishonesty is discovered, uh, your credibility will plummet. And when your credibility plummets, in the eyes of the masses, in the eyes of the youth, uh, that's the end of it. Uh, so it is always preferred to uh, be honest. Uh, this is not the time where you can hide knowledge anymore. This is the time of social media and time of the internet. Information age, everything is available. That's not basically the atmosphere where uh, hiding knowledge would work anymore. Uh, so the sheikh says here, whoever willingly drinks a muskir, because if he was forced to drink it, then he's not punishable. Forced to drink it is two things. Forced by death, you must drink it, humbly wise. Forced by threatening, like, you know, beating or something like this, it is preferred for you to not drink it, humbly wise. But whether you are, but if you are forced, there will be no had for sure. But there are different types of forcing. If you're forced by death and it's like a legitimate threat, then you must drink it. Uh, okay, whether a small or large amount, and we went over this, you know, whatever is uh, intoxicant in large amounts, then any amount of it is forbidden. While knowing that a large amount of it causes sukr, while knowing that a large amount of it causes sukr. Because if you don't know that a large amount of it causes sukr, there is no had. And in fact, this is a way, and I, you know, I told you before when we had the discussion on hudud, that they gave a way out for everybody uh, from all the hudud or almost, you know, all the time. There is a way out for everybody from al had. And I we will discuss this also when we go over had the sariqa. The way out for this person is to say, I didn't know this would cause intoxication in large amount. That's the way out. That's what they say in the, in the books of the method. If he claims that he did not know, he should be believed, should be accepted from him. And I will tell you the ultimate way out that the Hanbalis particularly uh, <laughs> offer. So, knowing that a large amount of it causes suk. If he says, I did not know, we should believe him. Because Ali flogged the Walid ibn Uqba and he flogged the 40 times and then Abu Bakr flogged the 80 times. And, and that may sound like a little bit surprising to you. Like why would the Prophet Sallallahu and Anas reported that the Prophet flogged the 40 times. Also, we talked about how when the Prophet flogged 40 times, it was not necessarily always flogging, but it was beating. People used their hands and used their garments and used. Uh, so that is why when we talked about the Hadood, I told you that the four that are beyond any discussion are what? Sariq and Haraba, the two that are mentioned in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Zina and Qazr, the two that are mentioned in Surah Al-Nur. And this one, Had bin Muskir, is by the agreement of the four scholars, it's almost there, like the four, but it is not completely there. That's why Ali, you would say, if I inflict the punishment of Had on anyone and they die, I would have no hard feelings or I would have no uh, regrets except this, the Had of Sharab al-Khamr, the Had of drinking Khamr. Because the Prophet said, 
انزان من نظاره بيدي ومن نظاره بن علي ومن نظاره بسعودي uh, and it was also 40 during the time of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and then it was said that عمر رضي الله عنه said to the, the sahaba um, and you know like how, how many times should we flag him and عبد الرحمن بن عوف said to him ارى اقل الحدود 80 I see that the least of the hudud is 80. That's Had al accusation of fornication. So they uh, flagged him 80 times. Uh, it was also said that Ali radiallahu anhu, and that is why it was also said that Ali radiallahu anhu said, uh, uh, in, in, in haza wa in haza muftari. If he drinks, he will. Uh, has a, has a, huh? He'll be incoherent. And if he becomes incoherent, he may accuse people of fornication. So uh, I believe that you should beat him 80 times. Ali himself said, I like to beat 40 times. And that is why you find this. And that is why, going back to the point of like when you say uh, Omar said, we uh, applied the stoning. You'll find the people that Abu Bakr al-Jassas, for instance, uh, saying that the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to feed with ilm min haythu asliha, wa innama ash-shubhatu fil-naql. That the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ indicates definitiveness, certainty, uh, if you're hearing from the Prophet himself. But the, the problem is the transmission. That's al sauce. So when it comes to this, did Ali want 40 or 80? <laughs> but then he, Ali said, 40, uh, and he himself applied 40. And he said that uh, all are sunnah. And that also needs some reinterpretation. What do you mean all are sunnah? If this is a fixed had by the Prophet وسلم, we have a little mushkil here. And we just need to be honest to, to say, well, I, it seems that a little, it's a little problematic here. Because if the Prophet fixed this at 40, then uh, going up to 80 does not seem to be an acceptable sunnah. Therefore, we have to say that this was not fixed by the Prophet And therefore, we will have to say, uh, and therefore some people went to saying that this is a ta'ziri punishment. <coughs> you may say that we will consider the had to be 40 and the difference to be the ta'ziri punishment. Uh, so yeah, so according to the early Hanbalis, it was 40. And then the latter Hanbalis chose 80. Because the latter Hanbalis felt, you know, the latter Hanbalis basically would cite Omar's acceptance of Abdul Rahman's uh, reasoning and Ali's reasoning and going up to 80. So the authorized position in the madhab is 80 not 40. What Ibn Qudama mentions here is not the authorized position in the madhab. It is the Shafi'i madhab and a position in the Hanbari madhab. The authorized position in the Hanbari madhab is the Hanafi and Maliki madhab, which is 80, which is Omar's, Abdul Rahman's, and also Ali's rationale. If he drinks, he will 
become incoherent, and if he becomes incoherent, he may uh, do qazf, and if, and I would think that you should uh, beat him like the one who makes qazf. Uh, the Shafi'is then, the Shafi'is then, because the Shafi'is, you know, Imam Shafi'i in his Qadim used to go by Fatwa Sahabi. But in his Jadid, he walked away from Fatwa Sahabi as a source. And then he would always try to go back to find something traceable to the Prophet. So Shafi'i in the authorized position in the Jadid, they say 40 because that is what they can trace all the way up to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then the Sheikh said, وَمَنْ أَتَى مِنَ الْمُحَرَّمَاتِ مَا لَا حَدَّ فِيهِ Okay. وَمَنْ أَتَى مِنَ الْمُحَرَّمَاتِ مَا لَا حَدَّ فِيهِ لَمْ يَزِدْ عَلَى or لَمْ يُزِدْ يعني لم يزد في عقوبته أو لم يزد الحاكم على عشر جلدات لما روى أبو بردة قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم لا يجلد أحد فوق عشر جلدات أو جلدات يمكن تحرك الساكن الوسط إلا في حد من حدود الله إلا أن يطأ جارية برأته بإذنها فإنه يجلد مئة so when one commits an act that is forbidden, but not punishable, by I, I didn't miss anything on uh, sukr on uh, because this is moving now to uh, tazir. We're done. Okay. So when one commits an act that is forbidden but not punishable by a had, the punishment is not more than ten lashes because Abu Burda reported that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, said no one should be flogged with more than ten lashes except in a had prescribed by Allah. The only exception is when a man has intercourse with his wife's slave, with his wife's permission, he will be flogged 100 times. So, لا يجلد أحد فوق حد you know, لا يجلد أحد في غير حد فوق عشر جلدات or no one should be uh, beaten more than 10 times or flogged more than 10 times in other than a had, in other than a had. This hadith la yujlad, there is so much uh, discussion about this hadith because it seems that there is mukhassisat or the hadith has not been always acted upon. Uh, and many of the scholars say that jald is you know, Imam Malik, for instance, prescribed flogging 400 times for someone who had some intimacy with a child. Uh, and it was not even all the way intimacy. It was just basically nothing. It was not intercourse. Uh, but Imam Malik prescribed for them 400, uh, to be flogged 400 times. Ibn Taymiyyah seems to support Imam Malik completely, wholeheartedly in uh, basically ta'zir, in his flexibility in ta'zir. There are others like Abu Yusuf and others who you know, are flexible with ta'zir. And it seems that most of the scholars who were Qadis, they found the need to be flexible for ta'zir. Therefore, their fatawa are impacted by their practice of qada. Uh, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, himself, it was reported to have prescribed 100 lashes for someone who sleeps with a slave girl of his wife with his wife's permission. So the slave girl is not owned to him, it's owned, she's owned to his wife, and if his wife gave him permission, that will get him basically demoted from stoning to 100 lashes, or get the punishment downgraded from stoning to 100 lashes. But again, the 100 lashes 
is the same punishment for the non-muhsan. He is muhsan, but since because of that ambiguity, it was downgraded, the punishment. They also, um, they ascribe 99 certain cases. They were, like Umar radiallahu anhu also uh, prescribed 20 lashes for someone who breaks the fast in Ramadan by drinking wine. So someone drank wine in Ramadan. Umar radiallahu anhu flogged him for drinking wine and added 20 lashes for violating the sacredness of Ramadan. So it seems that when it comes to ta'zir, ta'zir is a, is a huge discussion. But this is basically where Ibn Qudama mentions ta'zir in this uh, sort of short manual of fiqh. But we have other issues that pertain to ta'zir. Is jail time acceptable ta'zir? And yes, according to the majority, acceptable ta'zir. Could ta'zir be, could ta'zir be inflicted on people that committed the had but were somehow forgiven or which is haq al-sultan haybat al-sultan controversial but the majority the, not the majority controversial but what i believe to be the stronger position is that ta'zir could be prescribed in these cases as well could there be ta'zir by financial gharamat or penalties? Controversial. The majority of the scholars said no. Ibn Taymiyyah said yes. And he mentioned that the Prophet ﷺ is the first to apply this. If you steal fruits off the trees that have not been taken to their sheds yet, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said that you will be paying double the value of the fruits, which is a financial penalty. Uh, there are other things, al uh, there is a financial penalty, doubling the value of the mutlafat, of the things that are ruined by al ghasib or others as well. Uh, is a financial penalty. Therefore, ta'zir is a genre of punishments that are, should be kept flexible for the judiciaries and the legislatures to work with. This la yujlad hadith uh, has to be reinterpreted was always reinterpreted. We, we saw how the Sahaba, عليهم, how the Imr applied ta'zirs that were not limited to uh, 10 lashes. But also, also uh, we can say that when the punishment is not of the same kind of the had the punishment, it is a different story. It's not like a, a lower degree of a had the punishment. It's a different type. It's a not the crime. It's not a lower degree of a had the crime. It's a completely different story. And when we say that jail time, financial penalties are acceptable, then we will have basically a lot of flexibility applying ta'zir to different punishments and this is to us, Abu Ya'la says, and the, you know, the chosen position in the Hanbali Madhab, Huwal Hazm. This is basically, uh, this is basically what is prudent, what is wise, and what is needed for the Sultan uh, to impose the haiba of the dawla, uh, or the sort of the, uh, the awe 
you know, the uh, respect for the, the state. That brings us to the end of this chapter, which is Had al Muskir. We'll go over Had al Sariqa in the next uh, session. Let's take five, let's take a uh, th three minute break here and come back. Whew.